Okay, so today I'm going to show you some different methods of applying different types of elastic for your underpants. Um, and the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, flat application for fold over elastic. So um, in some other videos, I've shown you ways of applying fold over elastic where you actually you know, fold it over as it's supposed to be applied. But this is a kind of, um, I don't know, off book method. Um, so the first thing you need to do is determine which side you want to be the right side. Now, my personal preference just for um, the way it looks is to have um, this matte side as the right side. And then this is the right side of my fabric. So I'm going to put it right sides together and I'm going to use a wide zigzag um, to attach it. So you can actually serge it on at this point um, as well. I would probably not advise that until you feel really confident with, um, with doing that. So um, I use about a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm, I've got the edges of my elastic and my um, fabric lined up and I've, with the edge of my foot. I'm just gonna start off by anchoring it in place. I'm using black thread just so you can see. Okay, and then I'm going to start sewing. So if you have a sewing machine where you can set the needle to finish in the downwards position, then definitely do that. Um, so I've got my two hands here. Um, one hand's holding the elastic and the other hand's holding the fabric. I'm just gonna pull very slightly on the elastic only, okay? And then clamp them together. To start off with, it does help to um, pull from the back a little bit with your other hand. So sometimes I leave a little bit of a tail. I'm just gonna machine that on. Um, okay, so I'm just like pulling a little bit. And the procedure would be the same if you were using an overlocker or serger. You just need to be careful not to stretch the fabric as well. Just the elastic only. Line them up, hold it together. And then I do pull from behind. Okay. So just the elastic, just pulling the elastic. So I'm right sides together. Okay, and you go all the way to the end there. Okay, so this is a lot like a Pico elastic. Um, then you're going to flip it over. You'll notice how we have puckering here. Puckering is a good thing because it means that the elastic is pulling it in. So if you're not seeing puckering, then it means that um, the elastic's not gonna pull it in at all. So if you have a problem with um, the openings, like the leg openings being too um, wavy, for example, it might mean that you are not pulling the elastic enough when you are applying it. So I've just folded that to the back. This is what it looks like from behind. Okay, with the zigzag. And then, you know, it's up to you what kind of zigzag you want to do for this um, second pass. Um, it I think it looks nicer with a slightly narrow zigzag, but a wide one can look good too. A three-step zigzag can look good as well. I'm gonna just start a little bit further in. I should have left more of a tail here. Uh, and now I'm just going to stretch it, both the fabric and the elastic, to a point where everything's smooth. Try not to sew my finger. <laughs> And so I'm just pulling it just to where it's smooth and not overstretching it, just to where it's smooth. I'm running the inside of my foot um, along that line there. Okay. And that's the finish there. Of course, you would use um, matching thread and it would look a bit nicer. Um, okay, the next one I'm going to show you is um, 
using a pico edge so um there are many different kinds of pico edges um i've got this um really cute one here okay so when you're working with some sort of pico or decorative edge again you can serge it on but i'm just going to show you on the um sewing machine just on the domestic sewing machine what you need to do is you need to determine where you what you want to be able to see now i don't want to see any of this stuff here i just want to see just the loops extending over the side okay i just want to see that so what that means is when i'm zigzagging the first pass the left hand stitch has to be about in line with the edge of this elastic tape here so what I do is I just place it under there. I'm going to give myself more of a tail this time. Okay, and I play with my width of my zigzag until it's about right. So yeah, so it's now hitting about the edge of that tape if I run this inside edge of the foot along that um, side of the elastic. So I'm just going to get it started here. Okay, now I've got a bit of a tail. And again, I'm just going to stretch the elastic a little bit, not too much. Grab them together. I'm not stretching the fabric at all. Okay, again, just stretching the elastic a little bit. Grabbing them together and pulling through. So you can see behind here that the, I don't know, left side of the zag, the zig or the zag, <laughs> is right along the edge of that um, elastic tape. So I'm right sides together. Okay, that's probably enough for you to see. Again, I'm looking for a bit of puckering, right? So when I flip this to the wrong side, got a bit of puckering there, that's good. We're just seeing that loop, so it's a really pretty finish. And then again, just like before, it's up to you to determine how wide a zigzag you want for the finishing. Um, I'm running the inside edge of that foot along that fold line and just stretching it out till it's flat. different edge stretchy um really cute eh um okay let's have a look at another kind of pico this one's so cute look at this one <laughs> it's a little ruffle so again you need to determine um which side you want to be the right side now for this one I need to decide what I want against my body. And I think I want this side against my body. I'm just gonna cut it off. There we go. So this is the right side of the fabric. I want this side against my body. So when I flip it over, I want that bit to be against my body. So then I know that this is going to be the right side, the outside. There's not too much difference between the two sides for this particular um elastic it's cute isn't it so it'll, just like before i need to make sure that my zigzag is right on that edge because all i want to see is the ruffle i don't want to see any of that tape so i'm just going to get it anchored a little bit first and then i'm going to start stretching okay so just stretching a bit of the elastic just a bit only the elastic not the fabric holding it The elastic, lining the edges up. So 
such a cute finish, this one. Okay, that'll do. I'm gonna flip it back, I just check. Oh, and I can just see the, only the ruffle. So that's what I want. I'm gonna do a narrower zigzag for the second pass. So just stretching it out so everything's flat. So cute. Okay, and then the final one is the most unusual one. So this would be, uh, this is the um, using an elastic lace. So I've got this beautiful elastic lace here. So the first thing you want to do is determine which side is the right side and which side's the wrong side. Um, on this one, this is the right side. You can tell because there's this um, cording on the top and that's usually the right side. Then you have to determine which side you want um, like the edge to be and which side you want attached to the fabric. So I've decided that this is the side I want to be attached to the fabric. I've actually sewn a little bit on here already because I wanted to, I wanna show you how to join it. So, okay, so we're gonna start at this end here. And then I wanna see, decide how much I want it to hang off the edge. So I've decided that um, this in a bit of the scallop, I want to be just inside that edge and I can see it, see it through the lace using a narrow zigzag here. So stitch length of two stitch width of two. And what I'm going to do, oops, just need to get this lace out of the way is I'm just going to zigzag right in this, um, like this channel here. Um, Elastic lace generally doesn't have as much stretch as like true elastic, like fold over elastic or pico elastic. So we're not gonna stretch it quite as much when we put it on to the um, garment or you'll find that you won't be able to put your underpants on. Just gonna anchor it there. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it the merest stretch and I'm just going to try and follow that line as best I can. Now, you would obviously use um, a thread that matches the laces well as you possibly can, and you're really not gonna see it. So just trying to stay in that channel as best I can. And just keeping it straight. So at this point, I've got to sew um, around this scallop. Um, I don't find pinning it helps, sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're coming up to the point where we would join it. Now, what you want to do, like in an ideal world, obviously you would have it joining um, dead on, but all we're going to do is we're just going to overlap it like this. Just want to overlap it and overlap the stitching just for a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Okay. And we're going to trim that off. From behind you can see it's just zigzagged on. We've got a bit of a pucker because um, I stretched it a little. Now what you're going to do is fold this excess here out of the way. Now if we were ending you know, at one of these bigger scallops there'd be more to fold out of the way but we're going to fold that seam allowance or whatever you want to call it, extra allowance out of the way. And then you'll just zigzag. So basically I'm zigzagging this the lace together there to match the edges. Now you'll be able to see this because I'm using, you know, black thread. But if you were using the matching kind of bone color, 
you wouldn't really be able to see this at all. Because lace is, you know, kind of looks a little bit like zigzag. Anyway. Okay. Trim that away. Then I'm going to trim this extra lace away from here. And then also trim away from the other side. Oh, there's, I didn't actually catch very much. But if there was more going this way, you just clip that off, trim it off. Okay, now here's the cool bit. So right now what we have, you know, we can see that fabric through there, but we don't want to see that. So from the wrong side, what you're going to do is you're just going to go through with some little scissors and very carefully trim away that extra seam allowance from behind the lace. It's such a nice finish. So I'm just kind of following the line of the scallops and it won't fray because it's a, a jersey, a bamboo jersey, this one. Little embroidery scissors or applique scissors would be good. Just make sure you're not trimming the lace and make sure you're not trimming the fabric, like cutting into the main part of the fabric. This is just the edge. There you have it. It's got this really pretty lace edge now and against the skin you'll just see um, skin behind it and you won't see any of this fabric. It's just been trimmed away. So I hope that was helpful and interesting.